Welcome to all of the students of our soon coming King, Yeshua Hamashiach, Yeshua the Christ. Three things I need you to have. Number one, I need you to have the greatest weapon in history, the gospel that Christ taught. It is imperative for you, every one of you, to have uh, the divine gospel uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's number one. Also, number one, make sure if you don't have um, the physical King James Version, um, then I need you to have access to the electronic version. And thank you, all of the moderators, for putting that up. Uh, pass right beside Pastor Colleen's name, right beside Pastor Sam's name. Please, if you don't have the physical King James Version, at least I need you to have access to the electronic version, okay? You have to follow along because if you don't, you'll be blocked. That's number one. Number two, make sure you add two to three pins. And uh, number three, make sure you have a large notebook. I want to thank God for your prayers, okay? Uh, I thank God for the wisdom of every one of you. You have emailed our office in New York. You have emailed the bishop. You have um, reached out to me through social media and asking me about the crisis in the state of Israel. And what I'm about ready to bring forth tonight, I am not castigating the precious Jewish Israelis, okay? I'm not castigating them. It's not the people. It is the system of the state of Israel that is walking in apartheid. So I have to be careful what I say tonight because I don't want us to get a strike or be taken down. And neither am I castigating uh, the people, the citizens, 2.5 million people who are living in the largest open air prison on the planet today. And that is the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip, which is 25 miles long by seven miles wide, it is the largest open air prison in history. And the Holy Spirit had revealed to me, and I'm going to say this because no one is going to say what I'm going to say here tonight. I'm just kind of laying foundation before we get into the word. Both the state of Israel in the Palestinians, that land is not theirs. The state of Israel, I'm not talking about the nation of Israel, the state of Israel in the Palestinians, the Palestinians being the offspring of the bloodline of Ishmael. And Ishmael is upset because he's battling against an entity that's masquerading as Isaac. And so because of this mess, Oh, man, I feel an anointing here, too. Because of this mess, Pastor Sam, that was started by the Western powers of giving a land to a people who are not the original Hebrews, it would be my counsel and my wisdom to the geopolitical leaders of the world to force the state of Israel and the Palestinians to create a two-state solution. A two-state solution is not the perfect will of God, but it is the permissive will of God because of this mess. So I need your prayers tonight because I am going through a minefield. And have you guys ever seen a movie or a television movie? 
where you go into this intelligence building or this uh, mansion and it's got the red beams, the alarm system. So I'm going, I'm navigating through that tonight because I need you to have the power of prayer for the bishop tonight. Heavenly Father, send forth thy truth for thy word is the truth. Bless the man of God with wisdom, not just natural wisdom and not just even spiritual wisdom. But bless the men of God to have the hidden wisdom, which has been kept secret since the foundation of the earth. Take over me again tonight, Lord Jesus, Yeshua. Christ of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, take over me, Yeshua that I may bring clarity, clearness of speech so that the leaders can hear me tonight. And most of all, that the world will hear you first through the bishop, that I may bring calmness and peace to the situation. In Yeshua's holy name. I wish to invite your attention tonight. Uh, great to see all of you, Pastor Colleen, Pastor May Ren. Great to see you, Pastor Jody. Uh, if you're there with us tonight, I thank God for Pastor Jody Bird reaching out to me. Uh, you know, I feel the leading of the Lord to instruct you guys because of this. I invite your attention tonight to the book of the beginnings called the Genesis, the genetics of God. Genesis chapter 21, beginning with verse number one, going down with the verse three, and then dropping down to verses 9, 10, and 12. So that is Genesis chapter 21, verses 1, 2, and 3, dropping down to verses 9, 10, and 12. Need, then I need you to matriculate to the Old Testament, from the Old Testament to the New Covenant, to St. Paul's apostolic letter, to the Apostolic Church at Rome. In Romans chapter 9, verses 7 and 11, as we matriculate going 4,000 years later from Genesis 21 to Romans chapter 9, verses 7 and 11. But the key verse tonight that I need everyone to fully concentrate on is back in the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 20. You see, it's a mess, Pastor Joshua, because the Central Intelligence Agency, MI6 and Mossad don't want peace because peace will bring them to financial ruin. So Genesis chapter 17, verse 20 is the key verse. I need every one of you to go into prayer right now and get your patriot brothers and sisters off of Telegram, Gab, BitChute from the Patriot app. And that it is important for you to sit under this lecture tonight because it will bring clarity. All right, Genesis chapter 21, verse number one. Hear ye the word of the Lord. 
And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord, God of Israel, did unto Sarah, whose birth name is Sarai, but changed by God to Sarah, as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bear Abraham a son in his old age. At the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham, Abram means father, Ham means burnt skin or black. This is not a racial theological teaching tonight. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Isaac. Go down to verse 9. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, Abraham's side piece, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham mocking. In verse 11, and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because Sarah wanted Hagar, the bondwoman, and her stepson Ishmael out. And God said unto Abraham, or Heen, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman and all that Sarah hath said unto thee, Abraham, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac, not Ishmael, for unto Isaac, in Isaac, shall thy seed, shall thy seed be called. Now, matriculate going to the book of Romans, St. Paul's Apostolic Letter to the Church at Rome, in Rome, chapter 9, verse number 7. I don't know about you tonight. I, there's a heavy anointing here. Romans chapter 9, verse 7, hear ye the word of the Lord. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, not of the Western powers after World War II, but according to God's election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. The key verse that the Holy Spirit, Yeshua the Christ, is leading your bishop to teach you tonight. As you matriculate back 4,000 years going back into history that we call historicity, Genesis chapter 17, verse 20. Genesis, oh Lord. Genesis chapter 17, 
verse 20. For as for Ishmael or an, the DNA, as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, Ishmael, and will make him fruitful. The Arab oiled nations of OPEC and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make Ishmael make him a great nation. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Go back to the body of the text in Genesis chapter 21, verse number one. Let's lay apostolic foundation concerning a very unique title that the Holy Spirit has breathed upon me this morning. Module one, volume one. the immaculate conception or what I call the immaculate deception of the Middle East. Please write this down. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. One more time. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. There is a great distinction between a Chaldean, a Hebrew, and a Jew. Abram, or Abram, ram in the bush, His bloodline was not Hebrew, for Hebrew is not a genetical bloodline. Neither was Abram called a Jew, because Jew is not a bloodline. It is simply a spiritual discipline unto the Lord. Abraham's blood was not Hebrew, neither was it Jewish, but his blood was Chaldean. We have been strategically lied to. Every Hebrew is a Jew but not every Jew is a Hebrew. The term Hebrew rabbinically means he rules. When God gave Adam dominion, Adam technically was the first Hebrew, not Abraham. For the term Hebrew or Hebraic means he rules with apostolic dominion. The term Jew means one who is disciplined unto the nature of God. Every Hebrew that rules is a disciplined Jewish man or woman of God. But not every disciplined Jewish man or woman of God is called to be a chosen people to dominate the earth 
as he brews or he rules. So the rabbinical text teaches us that the term Hebrew is not a genetical bloodline. Neither is the term Jew a genetical bloodline. The bloodline starts with a Chaldeic bloodline through Abram, who then became Abraham, Ham, burnt skin. Abram came out of the earth of the Chaldees. He did not come out of Eastern Europe. Abraham did not come out of Central Europe, neither did he come out of Western Europe. Abram came out of the Ur of the Chaldees, and God brought him out of darkness of being a worshiper of the moon god goddess Allah which is a demonic entity, and God brought Abram into a Hamitic anointing to receive a divine covenant. So every Hebrew is a Jew, but not every Jew is a Hebrew. There is a great distinction between the state of Israel versus the nation of Israel. Let's begin with the state of Israel. As we are dissecting the foundation of the immaculate deception of the Middle East. The state of Israel, a nomadic bloodline called the Khazars, had no legitimate claim in Palestine. Let me say this again. The Khazarian genetical bloodline, whom God loves, has no legitimate spiritual and theological claim to the promised land. The term Khazar means a nomadic tribal people of Turkish Mongolian blood that's also connected to the Han dynasty in central China. The state of Israel, the ruling core of the Khazarian Empire, originated from the Caucasus Mountains, migrated to Turkey, then the Mongolia, then through the Han Dynasty in central China. The Kaganites being the political party of the Khazars, a ruling core from the Turkic Kaganite Mongolian Empire, its domain stretches from Manchuria to the Black Sea. The Turkish Empire of the Khazars is divided into Eastern and Western domains. The medieval Eurasian genetical bloodline is the Khazars themselves who are not genetical Chaldeans. They are not Hebrew by call nor Jewish by discipline. 
but they are Turkish Eurasians. The medieval Eurasians dominating from the Ukrainian steeps to the domain of the Ura, U-R-A-L River, from the middle Volga region to the North Caucasus Mountains to the Crimea. In 70 BC, we call this the time of the silent years between Malachi and Matthew, where there was no prophetic prophets, nor seers, nor word from God because of the darkness of nations. In 70 BC, through the edict of the Roman Empire, the siege of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple that goes back to Solomon, this destruction began on April 14th to September the 7th before the common era of the Christ. Because of the Roman Empire expansion of the Levant, L-E-V-A-N-T, and the term Levant simply means, students, a historical geographical area, the composition of Eastern Mediterranean regions of West Asia. The acronym or the demonym, D-E-M-O-N-Y-M for Levon or Levant is legion, for we are many. The state of Israel, so the mandate from the Roman emperor, Titus Flavius Vespasian, had commissioned a man by the name of Leo the Khazar, who called himself Titus Flavius Vespasian, or Leo the Khazar the First. Through the edict of the Roman Empire, the Khazarian bloodline stretches back not just to Turkey and Mongolia and through the Han Dynasty in China, but also interconnected to the bloodline of Constantines. So the bloodline of Constantines giving birth to the bloodline of Leo the Khazar I, called the Germanicus section of what is called Turkey today. After the fall of Jerusalem, 70 BC, then the Khazarian Mafia built a counterfeit temple called Herod's Temple. where the Sanhedrin of 71, Phariseistical and Sadduceistical secret societies were the money changers for the Roman deep state. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Herod's temple was built after the fall of our people in 70 BC, and the Sanhedrin Council was born called the Supreme Religious Body of 71 rabbinical scholars under the guidance of Rome, 13 years after the fall of Jerusalem. 
According to the Taninical scholars, Taninical, capital T A double N A I T I C A L, the Taninical scholars of the history of the true Jewish diaspora had said that the great Sanhedrin of 71 sages, 70 plus a chief rabbinic officer, met in the chamber of hewn stones called Herod's Temple. The Sanhedrin became the money supply serving as the Federal Reserve System of the Roman Empire called the Sanhedrin Supreme Council. I'm using spiritual wisdom. The composition of the Sanhedrin Council comprise of two Kazarian sectarian movements. The Pharisees, the Pharisistic sectarian movement created by Judas Maccabeus and his nephew, John Hycanus, H-Y-R-C-A-N-U-S, established a new monarchy, a new secret society through the bloodline of the Hasmonean dynasty. Hasmonean, Hasmonean, H A S M O N E A N, the Hasmonean dynasty, started in 152 BC, where they created priesthoods through the monetary system. That's the Pharisees. The Sadduceistic system was a second Kazarian sectarian system, a part of the Sanhedrin Council. Designed also according to the Maccabean era. They represent the elite rabbinical secret society whereas the Pharisees represent the common people of the Gazarian order, Pharisees and Sadducees. When you look on the Wikipedia and type in Sadducees, capital S-A-D-D-U-C-E-E-S, on Wikipedia. On the right hand corner of the Sadducee page on Wikipedia, it will show a 15th century painting of a Sadduceistic rabbi with his right hand in the form of a Roman Empire 666 code. Under the term Sadducee, S-A-D-U-C-E-I. That term, and I'm allowed by the Holy Spirit to give an example because we're under the blood of Christ through prayer. This is a Roman Empire 666 code hand sign that was also picked up thousands of years later by the Third Reich called Nazis. The Immaculate Deception of the Middle East. Stay there in Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. So then the Pharisees and the Sadducees comprise the composition of the Sanhedrin Council that Christ exposed apostolically. 
There's a third faction of the Kazarian Sanhedrin order. It's called the Essenes. Capital E double S E N E S. A lot of scholars believe that Christ was an Essene, but that, that was a lie. The Essenes were a third faction or party 2,000 years ago that was created in the second century BC by Jonathan Atphus, capital A double P H U S, of the genetical bloodline of the Hasmonean Empire. Hasmonean, H A S M O N E A N which the acronym for this empire called the Hasmonean Empire, the acronym is the term Hamas. Let me say this again. The acronym, now to pick up your jaw, the acronym for the Hasmonean Empire that created Three political factions, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes, the Middle Eastern, the Babylonian acronym for Hasmonean is Hamas, one that destroys the immaculate deception of the Middle East. A scholar by the name of Helio the Elder, H I L E L the Elder. If you will go on Google Images and type his name, Helio H I L E L the Elder, who was not Chaldean, who was not Hebrew, he was not Jewish, he was Babylonian. Helio the Elder, the founding father of both the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud. Not written by Hebrew, not written by a Jew, written by a Babylonian. When you look up the term Helio the Elder, you will see a child on his lap. I'm using wisdom. He lealed the elder who designed the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud, which advocates child marriage. That a grown man can marry a three-year-old little girl. A grown woman can marry a three-year-old boy. It's in the Talmud, both in the Babylonian Talmud and in the Jerusalemite Talmud. And later scholars of Rab Ashi, A-S-H-I, and Ravina, R-A-V-I-N-A, the second, had edited what Helio the Elder wrote, who came up out of Babylonian captivity, not as a Hebrew, not as a Jew, but as a Babylonian. Let's continue the laid foundation. Which brings us to the time period of crypto Kazarians. Can I take my time? My bishop, what is a crypto Kazarian? A crypto J or Kazarian 
is a man, a woman, or a child, publicly they are Muslims, but privately they are Kazarians. Crypto Kazarianism goes back as early as 500 AD, both in Portugal and Spain, amongst the Sephardic bloodline. I have to use wisdom. With the cryptocurrency system of today, began as early as 1400 AD. There you go, Pastor Sam. There you go in the world today. The cryptocurrency system is what we call money magic through money manipulation, designing currency out of thin air. 95% of any book or document written about the history of crypto jays or Kazarians are written by powerful Jewish scholars. The House of Saul, they are not Arabians. They are not Muslims. They are crypto Kazarians. Publicly, they appear to be Sunnis or Shiites, practicing Wahhabism, but privately, they are Kazarians. The House of Saul are Kazarian crypto Kazarians who then migrated to Arabia. Who created the House of Saul? The House of Saul was created by the Western powers, the United States and Great Britain, in France, going back as early as the 1400s. Because the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, coming up unto the early part of the 1900s, need access to Arabian oil. The House of Saul started with a man by the name of Saud Abin, I-B-N, Mohammed Murkrin, M-U-Q-R-I-N. Saud Abin Mohammed Murkrin, who designed a radical sect of Islam called Wahhabism and Salafism, and Sunnis and Shiites. Even today, Muhammad bin Salman is a crypto Kazarian. According to the Jerusalem Post, you see, Pastor Sam and Pastor Colleen, we are living in the time of the show me state generation, the, Mer the Missouri state generation. If you would type in on google.com Saudi royal family are descendants of Jays who fought Muhammad. Saudi royal family are descendants of Jays, I'm not going to pronounce the, the rest of that word, who fought Muhammad. That is on the Jerusalem Post website. The opt-in is January 15th, 2022. You can also go to concisepolitics.com or write or type on, type on google.com 
the documented J roots of Saudi royal family. Saudis are crypto Jays, not Arabs. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. You can type in also on google.com, the documented J's, I'm not going to say the rest of the word, roots of Saudi royal family. Saudis are crypto J's, not Arabs. You'll find that on concisepolitics.com. So the Jerusalem in the Israeli press is saying this, not the bishop. Crypto-Kazarians are also called Dome-Kazarians, D-O-N-M-E-H. If you go to Amazon.com and type in Crypto-Js or domain Jays, 95, as high as 97% of those documents are written by Jewish scholars. Saudi Arabia is actually a Zionist creation. Saudi Arabia is a Zionist creation for the access to Arabian oil. Do you remember the movie Lawrence of Arabia? Pastor Colling, who was the British actor that played in that movie? Pastor Colleen or Pastor Sam or anyone? That is one of my favorite movies and it would be wise for you to watch it. In Lawrence of Arabia, it is a true story of actually a man by the name of St. John Philby, capital P-H-I-L-B-Y. St. John Philby, Peter or two, thank you, Pastor Jilly and Pastor Rick and Pastor Vanessa. St. John Philby, whose son Kim Philby was a part of the Cambridge Five who were counter spies both for MI6 and the Soviet KGB. St. John Philby was an MI6 super spy sent by the British Crown to infiltrate the House of Saud in order for the West to take over Arabian oil. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Which brings us to the 1917 Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration capital B-A-L-F-O-U-R, is a 1917 document through the Foreign Secretary of Great Britain, Arthur Balfour, through the instruction of his slave master, Lionel Walter Rothschild, the second Baron Rothschild in Great Britain. Through the instructions of the British Crown by commandment of the Rothschilds in Great Britain, the Balfour Declaration would establish two entities. Number one, would establish the future state of Israel through number two, laying the foundation for the house of Saul. Thank you, Pastor Sippy. What interest would the British crown in the British empire 
want to create a rock child state of Israel. The Zionist Federation of Great Britain in Ireland, under the nationalist movement called Zionism. Zionism is not of God. Come closer. Zionism is not of God. Mount Zion, the apostolic church, is of God, but not Zionism. Zionism is a political system designed by the Rothschild dynasty in Eastern, Central, and Western Europe and given to a Rothschild agent by the name of Theodore Hertz, H-E-R-Z-L, who in 1897 created the World Zionist Congress. A year before the creation of the World Zionist Congress, in 1896, Theodore Hertz created and published a book called Der Judenstadt, capital D-E-R space, capital J-U-D-E-N-S-T-A-A-T, Der Judenstadt, means the state of the Jays, written by Theodore Hertz, whose plan was to first destroy the ultimate empire and then destroy the Palestinians. The British Empire created a political scheme called Mandatory Palestine. Mandatory Palestine was a geopolitical entity that was established between 1920 to 1948 through the region of Palestine under the terms of the League of Nations mandate for Palestine. The question God asked me this morning, Bishop, where did the term Palestine originate from? I said, Lord, can you give me the answer? And he said, no, look it up. The Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher. The term Palestine or Palestine that we got from the term pale face, Palestine or Palestine is actually a Roman Empire term. Under the Roman Empire, the true original Hebrews lost their sovereignty through the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 BC, including years later, 70 AD. So it was changed, the territory was changed from Judea to Palestine. Concentrate. The term Palestine or pale sedine comes from the Latin term Palestina, capital P-A-L-A-E-S-T-I-N-A, -A -E Palestina, which then the Latin term becomes the Greek term Palestine, P-A-L-A-S-T-I-N-A, 
P-A-L-A-L-A-S-T-I-N-E. That's interesting. Paula Esteen. P-A-L-A-I-S-T-I-N-E. Meaning land of the pale face. The state of Israel. I got to use wisdom. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Say there in Genesis chapter 21 verse 1. We're laying foundation. In order for you to understand the mess that's going on in the Gaza Strip, we had to go back into history. Palestine was created, the term was created by the Roman Empire during the 5th century BC. That was originally called Philistia. P H I L. I S T I A. Philistia was created by Greek scholars for the modern Tel Aviv. I'm going to say something that is radical. Nowhere in scripture will you find the term Tel Aviv. The term Palestine is also a Coptic transliteration of the hieroglyphic term Peelset, P-E-L-E-S-E-T, which is a hieroglyphic acronym of letters P-R-S-T, Peelset. The Philistia or the Philistines going back thousands of years or not the Palestinians. Let me say this again. You've been told a lie that the Palestinians today are the, were the Philistines of thousands of years ago. The Philistines are not the Palestinians. And the Palestinians are not the Philistines. The Palestinians, with even with a Roman name, are the offspring of Ishmael, of the seed of Abraham. Can I take my time? The Balfour Declaration in 1917 which laid the foundation for the creation of a state for Israelis. Where Israelis will occupy a land that they have no legitimate claim to. Allow me to use wisdom. The term Palestine is also an Assyrian term. It comes from the Assyrian term, Palashut, with the T silent, Palashutu, P-A-L-A-S-H-T-U, meaning to be occupied. So the International Zionist Commission had a plan to drive out the seed of Ishmael. The Balfour Declaration in 1917 establishes the future state of Israel upon the foundation of the house of Saul. The house of Saul is a fraudulent house. They're not Arabians, Pastor Sam. They are crypto kazarians Immigrated out of central Turkey going back to 1400. 
and set up shop in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I was on a um, a podcast last night out of Saudi Arabia. Another topic for another day. So we use fake Arabians, the house of Saul, to serve as the foundation for fake Hebrews. I got to be careful. The British Empire actually colonized Palestine. Again, the British Empire actually colonized Palestine. You see, a lot of you are here for the first time and you said, I'm confused. No, you're not confused. You've never been taught this before. You see, the British Empire colonized Palestine under a rule from the League of Nations mandate going back to 1920. And then after World War II, three years after World War II, the state of Israel was born with the bloodline of Zabitian Frankis Zevites coming out of Turkey and Mongolia and central China. In other words, it's a fabricated house, not the people. The system is a fabrication. In other words, the system was built in Turkey, moved to Palestine. Built in Mongolia, moved to Palestine. Built among the Han Dynasty in China and moved to Palestine. The Immaculate, Con not just the Immaculate Conception, but the Immaculate Deception of the Middle East. Please stay there in Genesis chapter 21. Woo! I got the Patriots here tonight. Listen. So the British Empire colonized uh, Palestine in 1920. And then in 1948, the Rothschilds created the state of Israel. Why 1948? One plus nine plus four plus eight equals 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Or 19 plus 48 is 67. June of 1967, the Six-Day War. So it is not by accident that you also have the State of Israel born in 1948. Its flag has nothing to do with King David of First and Second Samuel. The flag of the state of Israel, not the nation. The flag of us as the nation of Israel is Yeshua the Christ. Christ is our flag, the flag of the nation of Israel, the true Hebrews and the true Jews. But the flag of the state of Israel is a six-pointed, Hexagram, hexagon, pentagon, pentagram, heptagon, octagon code system that was created not by God, but by a man who calls himself, called himself a Messiah. There you go, Pastor Ray. David Alroy created the present state flag of the state of Israel. A double prong, double pyramid code that is occultic by nature. So the Rothschilds incorporated the design of a man who was not Hebrew, not Jewish, he was not even a Kazarian. David Alroy was born in Baghdad, Iraq in 1100 AD. A Iraqian created the flag 
which is flying for the state of Israel. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. After World War I, the Ultimate Empire falls in 1922, four years after World War I. And then came World War II. In that first Zionist Congress in 1897 in Basel, Switzerland, it was the Rothschilds that implemented the creation of World War II. After World War II, then David Ben-Gurion, it gets deeper. David Ben-Gurion, G-U-R-I-O-N, was the first head of state for the new state of Israel in 1948. David Ben-Gurion had helped form the most vicious intelligence agency on earth besides the CIA called the Mossad. On the 13th, 13th of December, 1949, the Mossad, or better known as the Central Institute for Coordination at the recommendation of Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion. Venture capital entities worldwide send billions of dollars to the Mossad. Since 1948, the United States has given the state of Israel $260 billion. Who created the Mossad? The Central Intelligence Agency, MI5 and MI6 created the Mossad for Israeli intelligence for the state of Israel. The rabbinical interpretation for the name David is the term dosum. That's wisdom, capital D A double S O M, meaning decapitating darkness. If you take the rabbinical interpretation for King David's name, dosum, and since Hebrew is written from right to left, dosum becomes the term massage. Oh, pray for me, Pastor William Morris, Mossad. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Stay there in Genesis 21, verse 1. The White Paper of 1939, which was a policy issued by the British government, led by one of the weakest leaders in history, Neville Chamberlain, an appeaser, an appeaser in response to the 1936-39 Arab revolt in Palestine. Prime Minister, oh, it, this gets deep. Let me get a drink of water here. <laughs> oh my God, this gets deep. Listen. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on multiple YouTube links, you can go to YouTube anytime and type in Benjamin Netanyahu said the Holocaust wasn't Hitler's ideal. I'm telling you what 
Benjamin Netanyahu said, you can look it up throughout all throughout social media and especially YouTube. Pray for me, Pastor Ty Kemp. Listen, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had said that the Holocaust was not Hitler's ideal. Benjamin Netanyahu, the present prime minister, a warmonger of the state of Israel, I got to be careful, said, and I quote, the plan of European and eventually global extermination of European Jewry was not birthed by Adolf Hitler. Netanyahu said it was birthed by a man by the name of Hodge Amin Al Hussein. H A J space A M I N space A L dash. Husini, Husini, H U double S E I N I. This is the show me state, my pastor Sippy. You can go on any, you, I'm telling you, Prime Minister, thank you, Pastor Colleen, Netanyahu said that out of his mouth. Am I correct in saying that, Pastor Sam? He said, that the plan, the final solution concerning the Jewish question for the global extermination and liquidation of European Jewry was birthed not by Adolf Hitler, but by Hajj Amin al Husseini who was the son of Muhammad Tahir, T-A-H-I-R, Al-Husini, who was the son of Musa, M-U-S-A, Al, A-L, dash, Husini, whose real name is H-U-S-A-Y-N-I, but it was changed to H U double S E I N I because the term Husseini of H U S A Y N I is Turkish or Kazarian. The house of Husseini is a bloodline that goes back to the Ottoman Empire during the early part of the 1300s. Hajj, H-A-J, Amin, A-M-I-N, A-L, dash, Husini, H-U-S-S-E-I-N-I, whose real name is pronounced, H-U-S-A-H-U-H-U-S-A-Y-N-I of Turkish Kazarian origin. Hajj Amin al Husseini was born in 1897. The same year of the First World Jewish Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland. How, now, what prime minister? Let me wipe some of the anointed off. <laughs> what prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, did not tell you in any video when he said that the Holocaust was not designed by Hitler? Because Hitler just wanted to excommunicate, to drive out the precious Jewish people out of Europe. 
In the 1941 meeting, Hajj Amin al Husseini told Hitler to exterminate the Jews. But the part that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu did not say on any of those videos was that a British Empire, this count, British nobleman, by the name of Herbert, Herbert Lewis Samuel, the first Viscount or British nobleman and the first High Commissioner for Palestine from 1920 to 1925. Herbert Lewis Samuel, a member of the World Jewish Congress later in 1937, Herbert L. Samuel, a member of the World Zionist Congress chose this killer, Hajj Amin al-Husseini, to be the Grand Mufti, M-U-F-T-I. The term Mufti means an Islamic scholar, a jurist qualified to issue non-binding opinions legally on a point of Islamic law and has the legal right to issue fatwas, F-A-T-W-A-S, which means Islamic rulings. Wait a minute now, let me get this straight. Netanyahu says that it was not Hitler who came up with the ideal of the Holocaust. Benjamin Netanyahu said it was Hajj Amin al-Husseini of the House of Husseini who met with Hitler in 1941 and said, don't excommunicate the Jews because we don't want them in Palestine. Just exterminate them. But who chose Hajj Amin al-Husseini to be the Mufti or the great Islamic teacher over Jerusalem in 1921? Herbert Louis Samuel, a member of the World Zionist Congress. <laughs> oh, you, you see, listen. Do you understand we've been lied to? A Rothschild agent chose a killer that would activate one of the worst, darkest days in the history of the world with six million precious Israelis, Jews, were exterminated because of Herbert L. Samuel choosing Mufti Hajj Amin al Husseini, who instructed Hitler to exterminate European Jewry. I'm going to give you some time to pick up your jaws from the floor. This is Module 1, Volume 1 of. The Immaculate Deception of the Middle East. Stay there in Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. According to the Peel Commission, P-W-E-L, in concert to the Balfour Declaration of 1917, it set up the future state of Israel. Imagine the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Hajj Amin al Husseini in 1941 went to Berlin, met with this other devil, Adolf Hitler, who is burning in hell as we speak, in Berlin, which gave birth to the Holocaust. 
Benjamin Netanyahu said out of his mouth, it was not Hitler who came up with that plan of exterminating 6 million people. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu all throughout YouTube had said it was Mufti Hajj Amin al Husini whose bloodline goes back to the Sabbatean Frankist dynasty in Turkey. You see, whoever wins the war controls the writing of the history. He was the Mufti Ad Harmin al Husini of Jerusalem, who was also selected by Samuel, listen, by Herbert L. Samuel to be the president, Supreme Muslim, the president of the Supreme Muslim Council over Jerusalem, which were catapult the Holocaust. Netanyahu said it was not Adolf Hitler, but it was Mufti Hajj Amin al Husseini, whose bloodline were later travel through Pakistan to the United States to introduce radical Islam to black America. I've got the testicular fortitude to say what needs to be said, the immaculate deception of the Middle East. Allow me to get a drink of water. Listen. Is your minds blown today? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight. Here comes the show me state. Type in on google.com The Times of Israel, there's an op-ed, the 19th of August, 2023, posted at 2.43 p.m. Now type this on google.com. Herbert Samuel's secret 1937 testimony on the infamous Mufti of Jerusalem Reveal. It's on a Jewish website. Don't call me an anti-Semite. On the Times of Israel, opt-ed, 19th of August, 2023, posted at 2.43 p.m., type in on google.com, Herbert Samuel's secret 1937 testimony on the infamous Mufti of Jerusalem Revealed. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. You see, Pastor Colleen, Pastor Sam, this is the show me generation. According to the Times of Israel, it said that Herbert Lewis Samuel, a Rothschild agent who helped facilitate the 1917 Balfour Declaration chose and him picked a killer who was of the genetical bloodline going back to central Turkey of the Frankish Zabatian Zevi bloodline chose him who will later tell Hitler to exterminate six million precious Jews. You are dealing with demons. Guess where Mufti Hajj Amin al Husseini went to school at? He was a student at the Alliance Israel Light University, a Zionist university in Paris, France. 
It's really called the Alliance Israel Lee University, a Zionist university that was built in Paris, France. Wait a minute now. Wait, wait, wait. You are telling me that one of their own had them exterminated. I got to be careful. I'm telling you what Prime Minister Netanyahu said. I didn't say it. But what Netanyahu did not say, Pastor Mark Williams, who chose this demon, this animal, Hajj Amin al-Husini, to be the Mufti of Jerusalem and to be the president of the Supreme Islamic Council over Jerusalem, a Rothschild agent. Herbert Lewis Samuel, who went on to be a member of the World Jewish Congress and attended the 1897 First Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland. You've been lied to. This killer was a student at the Alliance Israel Lee University, a Zionist university in Paris, France. Right? Copy this on Google.com. Type this on Google.com. Listen. Full official record what the Mufti said to Hitler. This is on the Times of Israel's magazine online site full official record what the mufti m-u-f-t-i said to hitler the times of israel opt-ed 21st of october 2015 posted at 7:09 p.m by by the time Israel stat on a Jewish website, magazine, newspaper website. It also said on that Times of Israel opted for official record what the Mufti said to Hitler. In 1943, another devil, a killer, SS chief. Heinrich Himmler praised Muthi Hajj Hassini for the plan that he gave Hitler in the extermination of Europe's Jews. But who chose this killer, this animal, Hajj Amin Hal Hussini? Herbert Lewis Samuel, a member of the Zionist Congress who went to Basel, Switzerland in 1897, and also a future member of the World Jewish Congress and the World Zionist Organization. Herbert, oh Lord, this is so heavy. Louis Samuel went to the first Zionist Congress in Basel. So he was the one that told this killer, hey, you are the first Muthi, and which gave him the legal authority to go see Hitler in 41 to liquidate six million precious souls. Herbert Louis Samuel attended the first Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland, on the 29th of August in 1897, and the conference lasted to the 31st of August in 1897. In the last Zionist Congress that Samuel Lewis, that Herbert Lewis Samuel attended, was the Zionist Congress in Jerusalem, Israel, 1956. The Second Zionist Congress was also in Basel, Switzerland 
August 28, 1898, by which B'nai B'rith was born. The Zionist Council of the State of Israel was born. The 38th Zionist, Zionist Congress took place in 2020 in Jerusalem. And April of this year, the 19th to the 21st, Jerusalem was the host of the 75th anniversary of the State of Israel, the 38th, the 39th Zionist Congress. Herbert Louis Samuel chose, see, I'm agitating demons here tonight. Herbert Louis Samuel chose Haj Amin al Husseini according to Netanyahu. Netanyahu did, he said it was not Hitler that came up with the ideal of liquidation. The only, this is what Prime Minister Netanyahu said. And he took a flacking for that, but Netanyahu told the truth. It was not Hitler who initially came up with the ideal of the Holocaust. It was Hajj Amin al Husseini who was chosen by a Rothschild agent, Herbert Louis Samuel, to be the Mufti over Jerusalem and to be the president of the Supreme Islamic Council that gave him the legal authority to go to Berlin in 1941 to speak to another vicious demon, Adolf Hitler. And it was Husseini who came up with the ideal of the Holocaust, the immaculate deception of the Middle East. In other words, Herbert Louis Samuel chose a killer who then created the European Holocaust. It was not Hitler who initially came up with the ideal. It was the patsy for Herbert Samuel Mufti Haj Amin Husseini. Stay there in the text. Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. Muammar Gaddafi was taken up by the CIA. He, one of his last messages to the West, Gaddafi had said that President John F. Kennedy was assassinated not by Lee Harvey Oswald, but by the Mossad through the orders of David Ben-Gurion. And there is a document called Kennedy Ben-Gurion in the Demona Project, Demona, capital D-I-M-O-N-A. Kennedy Ben-Gurion in the Demona Project by Zaki Shalom, an Israeli scholar, which says that it was the Mossad that took out Kennedy because Kennedy was putting pressure on the state of Israel and on David Ben-Gurion to shut down the Demona nuclear plant and northwestern Israel because Kennedy did not want the Mossad nor the state of Israel to build a nuclear weapon. It was not... the Soviet Union who took out Kennedy. It was not the Cubans who took out Kennedy. It was not Oswald. And as a side point, Jackie Kennedy Onassis, her family knew the family of Lee Harvey Oswald. Another topic for another day. In a 2012 book, 
if you guys want me to stop, uh, you know what the Holy Spirit told me, stop, Bishop, keep teaching. In a 2012 book, it's called The Missy Link of Jays. I'm not going to pronounce the, the entire name or term. The Missy Link of Jays, European Ancestry contrasting the Rhineland and the Kanzerian hypothesis. You remember the Kanzerian hypothesis. The missing link of Jay's European ancestry contrasting the Rhineland and the Kanzerian hypothesis by the Israeli scholar, Dr. Iran Elhak. Dr. Iran, capital E-R-A-N, Elhak, capital E-L-H-A-I-K. Dr. El Young Elhak, I would love to have him on my radio show one day, is a Israeli American geneticist, a geneticist and a bioinformational scientist. He serves as the associate professor of bioinformatics at Lund University in Sweden. Dr. Iran Elhak, an Israeli, had said, that 90 to 95 percent of the current Jews in the state of Israel and throughout the world are not true Hebrews. I'm not, it was him. He said 90 to 95 percent of those who live in the state of Israel and white Kazarians. Their bloodline does not go back to Palestine or to the ancient land of Israel. He said 90 to 95 percent of today's Jews, Israelis, have their genetical DNA and their genetical RNA going back to Turkey, Mongolia, in central China. That's why they were threatening to kill him. Dr. Iran Elhak said that the present day Jews converted to Judaism in during the seventh and ninth centuries. He said that they are not the original Hebrews. He said it. The writings of Dr. Iran Elhart also come from Dr. Ernest Renan, another Israeli scholar. Ernest Renan, R-E-N-A-N. -N. In 1883, wrote that 95% of European Jewry are newly converted Jews. But theologically, they are not the original peoples. How many of you have heard of the 13th tribe? You remember that? by another Jewish scholar, present-day Jewish scholar, Dr. Arthur Kessler, the 13th tribe that was published in 1976. General Albert Pike received a letter from an Illuminati member out of Italy by the name of Giuseppe Mazzini, in 1871, 
The same year that the United States became a corporation, the same year that the Empire of Germany was unified by absorbing both the Bavarian Empire and the Prussian Empire, that Albert Pike and Gi Giuseppe Mazzini had declared that there would be three world wars. World War I would take place during the time of the fall of the Tsar. Did that not happen? During the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution, where these devils, the Bolsheviks, and it was Vladimir Putin who had said that 90% of the commissars in the original former Soviet Union were not Russians, they were Kazarians. The first world war is to be fought for the purpose of destroying the Tsar and the Christ-centered Russian government of the Romanovs. It was through, ladies and gentlemen, Lenin, Stalin, and Trotsky, Bolshevik devils, who after they had taken out the Romanovs, had commissioned a couple to travel to the United States by way of ship that docked in New York Harbor and they took a train from New York City to Chicago's South Side. Benjamin Alinsky and Sarah Tannebaum were Bolshevik killers sent by Lenin Stalin and Trotsky to the United States to begin communism on Chicago's South Side, beginning with black folk. We're the only group of people, we don't know who we are, and we're so gullible. Well, who was Benjamin Alinsky and Sarah Tannebaum? They were the parents of Saul Alinsky. Rules for Radicals, Obama's God and Hillary's God. And this same Hillary just said in an interview that we have to deprogram MAGAs or we have to de You see, Hillary Clinton is of the, of the synagogue of demons. Saul Alinsky's parents were killers. World War One between 1914 and 1918, World War II was to be used to foment the controversy between fascism and political Zionism. And World War Three is to be played out between Russia, Ukraine, China, Iran, the Muslim world, and Iran. It's happening now. As a side point, the KKK was not created by white people. The KKK, the Ku Klux Klan, was created with Rothschild money six months after the end of the Civil War that began on the 12th of April in 1865, in 1861, the Civil War began on the 12th of April in 1861 and ended on the 9th of April in 1865. Six months later, in October of 1865, in Pulaski, Tennessee, Benjamin, listen, an attorney, Judah Philip Benjamin, 
who was, during the time of the Civil War, the Secretary of State in War for the Confederacy. And the Confederacy was financially subsidized by the Rothschilds, the North and the South. This is what these devils do. These devils do. They, they subsidize both sides of a war. And they don't care who wins as long as they, the Rothschilds, collect the political and financial power. Albert Pike and Nathan Bedford Forrest became the face of the Klan with Rothschild money. The Ku Klux Klan was originally a Kansarian secret society that came out from under the annals of the Knights of the Golden Circle. They controlled the slave trade. 95% of slave owners were not white people. White people did not create the Ku Klux Klan and white people did not create the global transatlantic slave trade. You've been lied to. White folk, you've been lied to and don't feel bad because we, as the black diaspora, we've been lied to. The Christian is why. A Kazarian devil by the name of Israel Cohen, who was a member of a secret society out of England called the Fabian Secret Society, who wrote a document going back to the mid 50s in 19, between 53 and 55, 1953 and 55, a racial program for the 20th century. Israel Cohen wrote, a racial program for the 20th century, and the system would tell you, well, oh, that was a lie. No, it's in the Library of Congress. Cohen said that it is the design of the Zionists to divide black versus white, white versus black, while we cast checks at the top. I'm not talking about the Jewish people. 99.9% .9 of the Jewish people today are absolutely beautiful people. I'm talking one family, the Rothschilds. The Rothschilds created the Ku Klux Klan. They created the transatlantic slave trade. White men were only the foremans on the plantation, but white people in the white Anglo-Saxon diaspora had nothing to do with the creation of the global black holocaust where over 100 million of our people stripped of their name stripped of their history stripped of their bloodline were butt broken on those ships which are shaped like the sole of a tennis shoe over 100 million but you've been told, call yourself African. But that's not the name of the original continent. The name of the original continent was called Alkebulin, which is a Coptic term meaning the Garden of Eden. So how did we get the term Africa? It came out of the Roman Empire through a five-star general by the name of Leo Scipio Africanus, whose family was filled with pedophiles who built the underground, the first underground dumb tunnels in Rome's history for the excavation and the selling of children throughout the Roman Empire. Leo Scipio Africanus defeated Hannibal during the Second Punic War in 202 BC, and any time the Roman Empire conquered a land, they changed the name of that land to the name of the general who conquered it. So why are you black folk calling yourself an African American? I'm an African Asian. I am a, an African star. Why are you calling yourself 
after the name of your former slave master because you don't know who you are. Let's get back now. Now look at the text after one hour, 49 minutes and 50 seconds of Genesis chapter 21, verse 1 of the immaculate deception of the Middle East. And the Lord said, and visited Sarah. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. And can Sarah conceive? How is it Abraham can have a son at 100 years old? You see, I'm 60 years old, but I'm only 60 years old inside of this simulation called time. But that's not my real age. First of all, this is not 2023. Remember phantom time? So Phantom Time says that we're actually living in 1772. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Spiritually, I have no age. The real you has no age, which means you're older than creation. Oh, Lord have mercy. You're not ready for this. You're older than time. You're older than the angelic government. You're older than Lucifer. You're older because you were already created in the mind of God before became before. And since you were already created in God's thought, for I know the thoughts that I think Think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not an evil to give you an expected end. So you are not 60 years old, 80, 100. You have no age. God spoke to Abraham. Now notice, he goes from Abram to Ham. In verse 3, in Abraham, Abram means father, Ham means covenant. Abraham would be the father of many nations, beginning with the nation, not the state. The nation of Israel. Well, Bishop, who are the true Hebrews? We are. Black America and we, the black diaspora, we are the true Hebrews. We are the true Jews. And you're going to have some racist people or you are in the back of the bus Jews. Okay, but the first shall be last and the last shall be first. But you've been lied to. You listen, you allow the deep state to stick you into Africa. When you look on today's map, Africa is in the Middle East, but that is an immaculate deception because in the original maps during the time of Christ, Jerusalem was in Northeastern al -Kibbelin. I want you to hear me tonight. Where Israel is at now on a map is a phantom timeology. So you got two groups of people, the Palestinians, Ishmaelites, fighting against those who think that they are Isaac. Listen, I don't want to get ahead of the Lord. Israelites 
before the Ice Age, before the Bering Strait, when a man could walk from Alkebulin to the United States, okay, and walk from Alkebulin to India and Europe, where Jerusalem is now on a map is a phantom. The immaculate deception, because the real Jerusalem on a theological map going back 2,000 years is located in northeastern Alkebulan. God calls Abram a ram in the bush. Ram, downloading knowledge, a ram. So God downloaded himself into the father of many nations, beginning with the black diaspora. I'm not making this a black and white thing. My job is to reveal the truth. Come out out of the earth of the Chaldees with Chaldean blood because Hebrew is not a genetical bloodline, neither is Jewish. Hebrew means Hebrews. Jewish means to be disciplined unto the essence of God's nature. Alkebulin, the Garden of Eden, is not in Europe. It's not in Asia. It was in Alkebulan. That's where the Ark of the Covenant is today in Ethiopia. Listen. So Abraham called out of the Ur of the Chaldees, called out of South Central, and migrated to a land that was occupied by the Amorites, the Anakites, the Amalekites, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Kerizzites. They occupied the promised land. But God chose a man of color to leave the South Central of that day. All he had was a promise in a suitcase. He did not know where he was going, but God was leading him into a land not to have his pants sagging. Not to have five pounds of gold in his mouth, 50 pounds of gold around his neck. Not to be called Snoop Dogg, 50 cent, quarter, nickel, penny, ice tea, ice cube, ice tray, icicle, ice pop, 6 9, 6 11, little bow wow, Snoop Dogg demon, Glorella garbage. That is garbage. That's not who you are. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I got spiritual sons and daughters in the rap music industry. I keep telling them, listen, I'm not telling you to give up on your dream, but you're going to have to change your appearance, okay? Sagging, S-A-G-G-I-N, but you write that right to left. You get the term N-I-double-G-A-S. It is a demonic psyop. Add the letter G at the end of saggy. S-A-double-G-I-N-G. Then you get G, N-I-double-G-A-S. Sorry, G unit. It is a demonic psyop. So you go from the original Hebrew and from the original Jew to a in, oh my God, I can't say the word. This is what the system looks at us because they think that's what we are, but it's not. Rat, lab rats, that's right, uncommon. 
God calls this black man out of the earth of Chaldees. Chaldeans were black, purple black. God called him, his wife Sarai, the children out of the, wait a minute, did they have children? They had children, but Isaac didn't come yet. And God called him from Abram to Abraham. And later God called him to Mount Moriah. Wait a minute now. God called him to Mount Moriah. The son that I gave you. I don't want to start crying for joy. I need you to take your son thine only son and take him to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him. Can you imagine, Pastor Sam, how Abraham felt? No! Can you imagine? There was a movie, oh my God, years ago. George C. Scott played Abraham. Oh my Lord, have mercy. I don't want to start crying for joy. Listen, it was a movie called The Bible years ago. George C. Scott and God said to him, not to get ahead of you, Lord, he said, Abraham, Abraham. The first call is relationship. Second call is covenant. You can't have covenant without relationship. People come here, they want a title, but they don't want relationship. The son that thou hast, thine only son, sacrifice him. So Abram became Abraham. Wait a minute now, but he has another son named Ishmael. What is the first letter of Isaac? I. What is the first letter of Ishmael? I. The letter I is the Ninth letter of the Western alphabet. Ish, listen, Isaac I, nine. Ishmael I, nine. God spoke to Abraham when he was 99 and said that you're going to have a son at this set time next year. And Christ, through the parable of the Good Samaritan, of the Good Shepherd, left the 90 and 9 and went for the one. So 90 and 9. So Isaac's first letter, I, the ninth letter of the Western alphabet, Ishmael, the second son, really, well, the first son uh, of Abraham, but second behind Isaac, Ishmael's first letter is I, the ninth letter of the alphabet, 99. When God called Abraham, he said, at the age of 99, you're going to have a son at this set time next year. Now, if you take 99 and turn those two direct numbers upside down, you get 66 books of the word of the Lord, even though 45 are missing. So God's timing is perfect. Now, notice in verse 8, Isaac is the one that is called. I'm going to reveal something that is radical. God spoke to me and said, yes, the Palestinians are the descendants of Ishmael. But he said, Bishop, the precious people of the state of Israel, their bloodline is not connected to Isaac, is connected to Ishmael. I want you to hear me, I know I'm gonna get some blowback on this. So you have two people in the land that they have no legitimate claim to. And the child was weaned. 
But look at verse number 12. In Genesis 21 and verse 12, God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, because of thy bondwoman. Okay, Abraham, you messed up. You got a side piece because you listened, not to Sarah, but to Sarai, which is the carnality state of the spiritual Sarah. And because of the side piece, you got mess in the Middle East and throughout the world. Verse 12, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called, not Ishmael. You actually had two Ishmaelites fighting against each other in the Gaza Strip. I gotta go, you're not ready. Wait a minute now. Two Ishmaelites who also came through the bloodline of Esau, who then migrated to Turkey, Mongolia, and to central China. So you got two Ishmaelites and two bloodlines of Esau Oh my God, I feel the an anointing. Who are killing each other, killing each other over a land that's not theirs. Oh, you're not ready for this. Wait a minute now. So, wait a minute. Abraham, Pastor Jody Bird, has two sons. Two sons, uh, Isaac I, Ishmael I, come closer. So, Isaac I, is the right eye, Ishmael eye is the left eye. Isaac and Ishmael are the two eyes on the countenance in the face of Abraham. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. We can't kill Ishmael because it will kill Isaac, but you can't kill Isaac because it will kill Ishmael, the two eyes of Abraham. Now I'll need you to matriculate to Romans. Is this mind blowing to you? I'm gonna take my time tonight. The Holy Spirit said, oh, listen, listen, you'll get to work or you just have to take off. God says he will give you double for your trouble, triple for your pain. Listen, no one is, thank you, Pastor Tiffany, no one is teaching this. And if they're telling you they're teaching this, they're lying. St. Paul's apostolic letter to the Romans, chapter 9, verse 7 neither because they are of the seed of Abraham or they are children. The state of Israel, they're not the seed of Abraham. They are our cousins. <laughs> they're not the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac, in the black diaspora, shall thy seed be called. But you got Ishmael who took over the land. Dropping down to Romans 9 and 11, 9 11. For the children being not yet born, not just we're talking about Isaac and Ishmael, but Esau and Jacob. Twins shaped like the number six in the womb of Rachel, being not yet born, neither have done any good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that the purpose of God, not according to the Balfour Declaration, not according to the Western powers of the United States and Canada and Great Britain and France, but according to to the election of God might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth the immaculate deception of the Middle East. The largest prison on this planet today is the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip holds 2.3 
million people in a 25 mile square circumference piece of land that's 25 miles long, six miles wide, it is a ghetto. But you see, my precious brothers and sisters, they forgot that they were in a Polish ghetto during World War II. Now the tables have been turned. You have stuck 2.3 million Palestinians in a 25 mile by six mile wide radius, no water, no food, no electricity. It's called apartheid. Oh Lord, you have no legitimate claim to the land. The Gaza Strip, destroying children. Don't listen. The, the Hamas, they're, they're animals. Should they be taken out? Yes, I have no problem. Hamas are animals. But my question I have for you, who made them animals? Why is it that our people drive by and kill each other? What made us do that? Oh, Lord have mercy. Listen, so you have 2.3 million people within the Gaza Strip that they need a pass to leave the Gaza Strip. Sounds like apartheid South Africa. Then you have the West Bank. The Palestinians are also in the West Bank that was first and that's by Jordan, and then taken over by the state of Israel, the 1967 Six-Day War. But they need a pass to go to Jerusalem or central Israel. Then you have the Golan Heights. And the Palestinians who live there, they can't go to visit their families in the, ga in the Gaza Strip, they can't go to visit their families on the West Bank, but they need a pass. That sounds like apartheid South Africa. Yes, Hamas are animals, and yes, they must be taken out. But you can't shut down electricity and destroy fresh water running water because you got babies there. But listen, these rock child demons, they don't care, man. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You have to excuse me. Listen, this is called an immaculate deception of the Middle East. You got a foreign child trying to get into the womb who has no business in that land, the state of Israel. So the Illuminati, the Freemasons, this is God is right, Freemasons. The Council of 1000, the Council according to national policy, the Club of Rome, the Committee of 300, the Hidden Hand, the Council on Foreign Relations, and the Trilateral Commission, all behind this mess in the Gaza Strip. Go to the key verse in Genesis, back to Genesis, going back 4,000 years, are you learning something tonight? Put up those faces if you are indeed learning something tonight. I, I double dare you. Put up those faces. Come on, patriots. We are exposed in the synagogue of Satan. I'm not talking about Jewish people. I'm talking one family, the Rothschilds. Genesis chapter 17, verse 20, which is the key verse tonight. And as for... I, Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him with the global oil diaspora and will make him fruitful through OPEC and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princesses shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant 
where I established, not with people who came out of Turkey, not with people who came out of Mongolia, not through people who came through the Han Dynasty in China. My covenant would be for those, with those who came on those slave ships, who were lynched and beaten and raped and robbed. We have the covenant, the immaculate conception of the Middle East. Genesis chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. Chapter 17, verse 20. In verse 21, but I will establish with Isaac. The covenant was, is with us. Now stay there in Genesis 17 verses 20 and 21. The immaculate or the immaculate deception of the Middle East. Allow me to get a drink of water. And you have my permission to share this teaching throughout social media. Apartheid is a crime, as the deep state says, against humanity. I don't use the term humanity. Why don't you use the term humanity, Bishop? Because the term human means monster. According to the 1948 Valentine's Law Dictionary, it terms human as sea monster or monster. The term human is nowhere to be found in the scripture. The term humanity is nowhere to be found in the scriptures. And you know why? Because the term human means monster and hybrid. You, do you know this flesh is a hybrid? You talk about hybrids, 8 billion people are true nature, the spirituality of Christ is carrying around a corpse that's a hybrid. That was the goal of the serpent to make, actually 117.5 billion people were born in history. We're down to 8 billion who are carrying around a corpse called a hybrid. This is not natural. It's unnatural. Stay there in Genesis chapter 17, verse number 20 and 21, the key verse, the immaculate deception of the Middle East. Apartheid, I call it, is crimes against God's creation. In the 2021 Human Rights Watch, accused the state of Israel of apartheid based on the 1973 apartheid convention through the 1998 Rome statute of the International Criminal Court. It said that the state of Israel, going back to 1973 and also 1998, committed three elements of apartheid, the state of Israel. An intent by one group to dominate the other. Two, systemic oppression by one racial group over another. And three, one or more inhumane acts, turning off water, killing, this, don't get me wrong, Hamash, these are animals. They kill thousands of Israelis and children. The, the Hamas should be liquidated. I don't have a problem with that. The Hamas must be destroyed. But who created the Hamas? The state of Israel. The state of Israel, the Mossad, created the Hamas. In 1987, why, Pastor uh, Colleen? Because they needed to create an enemy to give the pretext to get more money from the United States. It's a racket. 
the state of Israel is denying people the right to leave the Gaza Strip, to leave the West Bank, and to leave the Golden Heights, the Golan Heights, to return to their country. The expropriation of landed property. Okay, we, we, oh my, they came out of Turkey, but they took your land, okay? In the creation of separate reserve ghettos, the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, the Golden, the Golden Heights, it's apartheid. Four sections of Palestinians live throughout the state of Israel. 2.3 million people are living in this ghetto, the largest open air prison on the earth today, the Gaza Strip. Those people are not allowed to vote in Israeli elections. They need a pass to get out of the Gaza Strip. And they have a different type of color of a pass co compared to those who are living in the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights. In the West Bank, you had 2.1 million Palestinians. No right to vote and can't leave without a pass. 400,000 Palestinians in East Jerusalem, even though they have the freedom to walk around Jerusalem, but they can't vote in any Israeli election. And the Palestinian citizens of Israel, they are under apartheid. Why do you think that they have turned into animals. Yes, take them out, take out Hamas, crush them. I don't have a problem. But the babies, both Israel, Israeli babies are precious and Palestinian children are precious. This is a mess going on here in the Middle East. I'm going to blow my nose. You have to excuse me. Can, can I take my time tonight? I say, can I take my time? Please excuse me. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Please write this down. Oh, Lord Jesus. The immaculate deception. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Go back to, to the body of the text, please, to Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 to 3, and drop it down to verses 9 and 10 and 12. Marjorie 1, volume 1 of the Immaculate Deception of the Middle East. Let me get a drink of water. It, it gets deeper and it's uglier. Listen. Iran's former... Spy master, the former head of Iranian intelligence, the Ministry of Intelligence and Security, a man by the name of Hadar, H E Y D A R, Moshli with the H signing, M-O-S-L-E-H-I. Hidal Moshli said that Mossad, MI6, and the CIA created the Islamic State. Let me say this again. He said that the Mossad, MI6 and the CIA created the created the the Islamic State. Well, matter of fact, go to Google.com and type this in. Iran's former intel minister, Mossad, MI6, and CIA created Islamic State. 
This is on the Radio Free Europe link. See, uh, see, Pastor Colleen, this is called receipts. The Mossad, the MI6, and the CIA created the Islamic State. Now, what is the Islamic, the Islamic State beside ISIS and ISIL out of Iraq and Iran? It is every single terrorist organization in the Middle East was created by the United States. Let me say this again. Every terrorist organization in the Middle East alone was created by us. The CIA, with the help of MI6 in the Mossad, because we need to create an enemy in order to ask Congress for more money to sustain the global military industrial complex. This is a straight out lie concerning, oh, we got to do it for democracy. Stop. Every terrorist organization, do me a favor, type in CIA.gov in space, terrorist organizations. This is on the CIA's website, CIA.gov, the World Factbook. Under references, terrorist organizations, over 60, actually 68 terrorist organizations in the Middle East alone were created and are subsidized by the CIA. It's on, listen, these arrogant demons at the CIA it's on their website. They're not hiding this. We need to create an enemy. Alexander Pushkin once said a, that a deception that elevates us is dearer than a host of low truths. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. They're, they were created and subsidized CIA, including Hamas. Oh, Lord have mercy. You're being lied to, patriots. The global military industrial complex is the, in, not in the billions of dollars, in the trillions of dollars. Because, listen, politics is war without blood. War is politics with blood. But in order to bring trillions of dollars through the global military industrial complex, we need to create an Al-Qaeda, a Taliban, the Mujahideen created by the CIA. During the Carter administration, the CIA created the Mujahideen to fight against the Soviets during the Afghan-Soviet war. And now the terrorists are using the money and the weapons that we gave them against us. I get, listen, the immaculate deception of the Middle East, you are being lied to. I'm sick and tired of our government lying to us. The former prime minister of Israel, the state of Israel, Ehud Barak, has said on a YouTube video, several YouTube videos, he said that the state of Israel is an apartheid state. It's a slippery slope. But he said that we are an apartheid state. I didn't say, don't call me an anti-Semite. 
the Islamic State, not just through Iraq, ISIS, and Syria, ISIL, but the entire Islamic world was created by the CIA, MI6, and Mossad to this day. Pastor Colleen, if you can put up the CI.gov, the World Fact Book, Fact Book terrorist organizations that the CIA subsidizes. References under terrorist organizations, over 60, 68 terrorist organizations, a part of the Islamic State and the former head of Iranian, of Iranian intelligence. Let me say this again. The former head of Iranian intelligence said that the Central Intelligence Agency, with the help of MI6 and Mossad, created the Islamic State. Why? So that we could create an enemy so we can give the pretext, the Congress, that we need billions of dollars to sustain the global military industrial complex. It's nothing but a scam, patriots. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. With an additional 10 non-designated Islamic states of Iraq and Asham, A-S-H-S-H-A-M, or ISIS and ISIL. Wait a minute. This is what we do. We deem North Korea and Iran as the axis of evil, but at the same time, we give them weapons. Kim Jong-un and all those demons, how is it that they can afford a nuclear weapon? Because the CIA sells him the uranium. Do you know why you got nine nations on the face? I don't want to get ahead of the Lord, but you got nine nations from the United States down to Pakistan who has atom and hydrogen bombs. They sell it to each other. Listen, stay there in Genesis chapter 21 as we come in. The Islamic terrorist state, all created by the CIA with the help of the Mossad in MI6, let's create an enemy and use the fake news networks throughout America and throughout the world. ISIS, ISIL, the Mujahideen, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, the Muslim Brotherhood, Hezbollah, all created by us. The Muhuja Hadin. I feel the anointing, Pastor Sam. Muhajed. Muhuja Hadin means a struggler involved in a jihad. The Muhuja Hadin was created by CIA director Stansfield Turner. In 1978, through Operation Cyclone, through Operation Cyclone, the Central Intelligence Agency, through its director in 1970, under the uh, Jimmy Carter administration, Stansfield Turner created the Mohuja Hadeen Afghan warriors to fight against the Soviet Union, which led to their downfall in 1991. And out of the Hadin, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, Hezbollah, including one that went to Harvard. A young man who went to Harvard Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden is a creature of the CIA. All those killers 
in Guantanamo Bay who should be lynched, but they were created by the Central Intelligence Agency. Why? We need to create an enemy to give us the pretext to get more money from Congress. We don't care if your child is slaughtered in Iran or Iraq or Afghanistan or Ukraine. They don't care. Let them put their crackhead meth head son up to bite on the front line, but they won't do that. Now you got to bury old Danny boys. Why? Because of these demons in Washington, D.C. Now the Hamas. Let me get a drink. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, mind-blowing. American taxpayers are funding all of this mess. Okay? Listen, I'm not one of these preachers with wearing rainbow sashes, driving gravy trains with biscuit wheels, okay? Drag store house. I am not that type of an apostle. My assignment is to expose the global system of Lucifer and to destroy it. Hamas. Which is the acronym for the term Hamasian dynasty that created the Phariseistic system, the, Sadduce the Sadduceistic system, and the Essenite system, which comprise of the composition of the Sanhedrin Council that Christ exposed 2,000 years ago. Hamas was created by the Mossad through the state of Israel in 1987. The Islamic resistance movement, and even going back further to the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, which the Mossad later poisoned Arafat, and the Fatah party, all creatures of the Mossad with the help of the Central Intelligence Agency. They don't want peace in the Middle East because, Pastor Leslie, if there is peace, the money will dry up. So they keep creating these terrorist organizations. You turn off their electric, you cut off fresh water, you put up blockades so the children won't receive food. So these children turn into animals. And then Net Netanyahu said, why did they attack us? How is it that the Mossad, British MI6, and the CIA missed the Hamas coming into Jerusalem, into central Israel. How is it? Because they knew, Pastor Sippy, it was going to happen. Just like FDR knew that the Japanese would bomb Port Pearl Harbor. Oh, my God. Okay? As a pretext. Then you got the Crack News Network. They used to have Don Sweet T. Lemon and Christopher Freda Cromo, who's fired, and over at MSNBC with Rachel Madcow Mano. And don't forget about Joy Crisco Oil Reed. And even at Fox, they're perpetuating the lie. Oh, uh, that the state of Israel, oh, the CIA, the Mossad did not know that this, they knew that this was going to happen. Let me tell you, that Lord of War movie, I'm telling you, Pastor Q, that's a powerful movie. Nicolas Cage, that's a true story of a Mossad agent. Where do you think that over 68 terrorist organizations in the Middle East where do you think they get their missiles from and their guns? They get them from us. In 1987, the Hamas 
was created by the Mossad as a pretext to continue wars against the Gaza Strip, against the Golden Heights, and against the West Bank, so that the state of Israel, through proxy wars, can blood suck the, the United States for money. Oh, my Lord. After the collapse of the Ottoman Empire in 1924, six years after the end of World War I, in 1924, the Western powers of the United States, Great Britain, and France needed to fill the political and wartime vacuum that was left by the fall of the Ottoman Empire. So they created ISIS and ISIL, Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and the the Mujahideen. We created this mess so that we can use brand new toys of hydrogen nuclear weapons against them. You're dealing with sick, these sick demons. It's all orchestrated, Coco. They knew the Hamas. And how do you know that, Bishop? Listen, my two contacts in the federal government, whose names I'm not going to reveal because I'm not stupid. I'm not going to be six feet under and you're going to hear my name on CNN. My contacts told me that even throughout the Mossad in the in the Hamas, there are Hamas spies working for the Mossad, and there are Israeli spies working for the Hamas. I want you to hear me. There are Hamas spies working for the Mossad, and there are Israeli Mossad agents working for the Hamas. That's why they knew it was coming. Type this in on google.com. This is receipts. Leaked operation confirms Erdogan's E R D O G A N apostrophe S. He is the president of of Turkey. Erdogan support for Hamas front organizations. Leaked operation confirms Erdogan support for Hamas front organizations. That's on the Nordic Monitor link. The opt-ed, July 4, 2023. Three months before Hamas had entered into Jerusalem. Also on another opt-ed, type in on google.com, CIA attempted to contact Hamas despite official U.S. ban spy cables reveal. CIA attempted to contact Hamas despite official U.S. ban, spy cables revealed. You'll find this in the Guardian newspaper link through the op-ed on through the Guardian news going back to Monday, the 23rd of February, 2015. During the Obama administration, he had sanctioned CIA agents to recruit Hamas agents to infiltrate the Mossad. And Obama also sought the CIA's help of taking Mossad agents to infiltrate the Hamas. They're all working for each other other you're being hoodwinked bamboozled in let it you're being lied to and the entire islamic state 
is funded by the Central Intelligence Agency, created by the Central, the Central Intelligence Agency, subsidized by the Central Intelligence Agency, including MI6 and Mossad. Another link that I want you guys to type in on Google.com, America funded terrorism and back terrorists. America funded terrorism and back terrorist. The U.S. is the largest state sponsor of terrorism. Let me say this again. The U.S., the United States of America, is the largest state sponsor of global terrorism. That's on the medium.com. This is receipts. I'm not making this up. Do you want to know who is the biggest drug dealer in history? The CIA. Do you want to know who is the most powerful mafia in history? The CIA. Do you want to know who is the most powerful, you know, sponsor of global terrorism throughout the earth? The Central Intelligence Agency. Again, let me go through this again because I want every one of you to see what I see, okay? It's on medium.com or just type in on google.com America funded terrorism and back terrorists. Again, America funded terrorism and back terrorists. Okay? It's on the medium.com uh, the op-ed was written January 18, 2021. America funded terrorism and back terrorists. In underscore, the U.S. is the largest state sponsor of terrorism. An op-ed on the media.com January 18, 2021. And one may be saying, what does this have to do with the Middle East? Thank you, Pastor Colleen. See, this is the show me state, Pastor Colleen and Pastor Sam. So you got spies, Mossad spies working for the Mossad. You got, you got, uh, you got Mossad spies working for the Hamas. Mossad spies working for Hamas. And Hamas killers and spies working for the Mossad, working for the CIA, working for MI5, MI6, Pakistani intelligence. In my conclusion, the question I want to ask you, every one of you, how many atom and hydrogen bombs we have on this earth? What's happening? Who is funding Russia to destroy Ukraine is China. I support President Vladimir Putin. He's a patriot. He's not there to destroy the Ukrainian people. He's there to, to crush the Nazi five deep state of the Azovs, A-Z-O-V, government in Ukraine. China is supporting Russia, who is destroying, rightfully so, the Nazi government of Zelensky. The United States is borrowing money from China to send to Ukraine. China is supporting Iran, and Iran is supporting Hamas. And Hamas wants to destroy the state of Israel. You see, they're all supporting each other. There's seven links for the nice class. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. Remember the $6 billion? <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my. The $6 billion that Joe clone Biden built back but broken Diaper Brandon in exchange for five hostages gave terrorists six billion dollars. 
who is a James Kirby, John Kirby, who is a part, who's a spokesman for uh, the Biden administration. No, uh, this is going for humanitarian purposes. Stop. We're told today that the money is in Qatarian banks. Who runs the banks in Qatar? Let's break this down. <laughs> I told you I am a contract killer. I'm an apostolic assassin. I am a Pentecostal mercenary. My assignment is to destroy the global system of Lucifer. Morja 1, Volume 1 of The Immaculate Deception of the Middle East. Stay there in Genesis chapter 1 as we close out tonight. The $6 billion is in the following banks. I want you to write this down. Now, you won't see this online. This is from my contacts in the federal government whose names I will not reveal because I was told three years ago if I ever reveal their name, if their name slipped out, it will cost me my life. Listen, I want you to hear me. So I am not stupid, so I have to use wisdom. So the Biden administration gave the government Iran of Iran $6 billion. That money was frozen by our great president, President Donna J. Trump, who got us out of, rightfully so, the Iranian agreement. And thank God for that. But this demon Biden got us back in. President Trump, to his wisdom, froze $6 billion in U.S. dollars of Iranian dollars that was in South Korean banks. And three, three and a half weeks ago, Joe Biden unfroze that $6 billion out of those South Korean banks throughout Seoul, South Korea. And we're told by, uh, what's her name, Jean-Pierre? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, 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 Bishop. Wait, wait. Little Jean Pierre, okay, who keeps saying every five minutes, I am the first a lesbian. Um, uh, uh, pressing. Who cares? Jean Pierre, a straight up lying demon. She said that the money is being used for humanitarian purposes. The $6 billion is divided through the Central Bank of Qatar ran by the Rothschilds. And that $6 billion through the Central Bank of Qatar ran by the Rothschilds because the Rothschilds run 95% of central banks on this earth. The Qatar National Bank the Barwa Bank, B-A-R-W-A, the HSBC Bank of the Middle East, the al Kaja Commercial Bank, K-A-A, K-H-A-L-I-J, Commercial Bank, the Qatar Islamic Bank, the Ali, A-H-L-I Bank, the Qatar Development Bank, that's also ran by Chinese intelligence on behalf of the Rothschild sons called NMM, NMM Rothschild banks throughout Central and Western Europe. The Qatar International Islamic Bank, the Q, Q double I B ATM Bank, and the Doha Bank, D O H A Bank all ran by the Rothschilds through the Qatarian Central Bank. So the $6 billion that was unfrozen from South Korean banks is supposed to be used for humanitarian purposes is being funneled <laughs> as a money laundering scheme back to Iranian intelligence 
and the percentage of that going to the Chinese. You're being lied to by Joe Built Back Butt Broken Diaper Brown Brandon. So Hamas is created by the state of Israel. There are 13,000, come closer, like Pastor Sippy says, there are 13,080 atom and hydrogen bombs on this earth. Wait a minute now. Third, the same type of bomb, which is a thousand times more powerful, that was dropped on the Japanese near the end of World War II. 13,080 atom in hydrogen bombs. Russia, the United States, China, France, England, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea, with six hosting nuclear weapons, um, those countries that are under, okay, the atomic energy of the United States, Italy, Turkey, Belgium, Germany, and the Netherlands, and Belarus under the Russian authority. That is Russia, the United States, China, France, England, Pakistan, India, Israel, North Korea, plus six other hosting nations that are hosting nuclear weapons. That's 15 nations that has 13,080 atomic and hydrogen bombs. One, oh Lord have mercy, this, this is my blowing information, Ali Seven Ditto. One nuclear bomb, whether it's atom or hydrogen, can liquidate 565,000 people. One bomb, whether it is atom or hydrogen, times that by 13,080 atom and hydrogen bombs that 15 nations, Russia, the United States, China, France, the UK, Pakistan, India, Israel, North Korea, Italy, Turkey, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, and Belarus, if every one of these nations if every one of these nations dropped 13,080 atom and hydrogen bombs, it would liquidate every single person on the planet. I want you to hear me tonight. These devils don't care. Wait a minute now. 13,080 atom and hydrogen bombs. Russia has the has the most powerful hydrogen bomb. It could kill 75% of China. Oh my 15 nations. 13,080 atom and hydrogen bombs could wipe out all 8 billion people in one day. This is the reason why we are headed for World War III. And that's why Christ is coming for the apostolic church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. In my conclusion of the immaculate deception of the Middle East, the Mossad, through the state of Israel, said about the Palestinians, and I quote, the ideal is to put the Palestinians on a diet, but not to make them die of hunger, but to be subservient to us. 
Hamas are animals. I have no problem. Take them out. But when I'm saying the state of Israel is talking about every Palestinian, because every Palestinian is not a terrorist. The idea is to put the Palestinians on a diet, but not to make them die of hunger. Those in the Gaza Strip. And it's so bad in the Gaza Strip that they have no proper sewage. So all the raw sewage of every home in the Gaza Strip has to be poured into the sea. Half of the population of the Gaza Strip is children. That's pain, that's trauma. They become animals. You see, it's a cycle. According to the Guardian newspaper, the opt-in October 17, 2012, it said that the state of Israel used calorie count to limit Gaza food during blockade. The state of of Israel, I don't want to start crying. The state of Israel used calorie count to limit Gaza food during blockade, and that was in 2012. Now they're going to send troops on the ground, and it's to my understanding today that Biden is going to send American troops. Oh my god! And that is the end tonight. At the three hours, one minute and 33 seconds of the immaculate deception of the Middle East, and I thank you. The state of Israel used calorie count to limit Gaza food during the blockade. Not just going back to 2012, but it's now. The ideal is to put the Palestinians on a diet, but not to make them die of hunger. That's apartheid from both sides. And my counsel and wisdom would be to the Western and Eastern powers because you have two groups of distinct people who have no legitimate claim of the promised land. The state of Israel are not the original Hebrews or Jews. They're out of central Turkey. They are domain crypto Kazarians out of central Turkey, Mongolia, in the central part of China through the Han Dynasty. So they had no legitimate claim to the promised land. And on the other side, the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, the Golan Heights in the West Bank, have no legitimate claim to the promised land because they are of the genetical bloodline of Ishmael through Esau, including the state of Israel. So my counsel, and I prayed about this, Pastor uh, Sam and Pastor Colleen, and Pastor Jody Bird, uh, I thank God for Pastor Jody Bird sending me a message Bishop, please instruct us. I don't support the state of Israel. I'm not talking about the people. I don't support the state of Israel. But I am praying for the precious Israel leads in the state of Israel. Do you understand? Hamas are animals. But Middle Eastern policies made them that. I'm not excusing them. Hamas should be taken out and crushed. I have I don't have a problem with that, Pastor Colleen. But the Palestinians don't have a legitimate right to the land, neither does the state of Israel. So you got two occupants in the land of promise who had no legitimate claim to the land that flow, that's flowing with milk and honey, but we do. 
But my counsel in wisdom as an apostle, as an apostolic global leader, because of this mess, Pastor Jody Bird, it would be my counsel in wisdom for both parties, the state of Israel and the Palestinians, to create a two-state solution. It is not the perfect will of God, but because of this mess, in the Middle East, in this mess in the Gaza Strip, in this mess in the Golan Heights, in this mess on the West Bank, there has to be a two-state solution. The state of Israel in a Palestinian state, because if not, they're both going to liquidate each other. Pastor Jody Bird, I went to God in prayer, and I prayed Pastor Jody Bird, when, and I know, are you still with this, Pastor Jody Bird? Uh, I thank God for you, Pastor Jody Bird, for sending me that message. I support the nation of Israel. I don't support the state of Israel. When I say I don't support the state of the state of Israel, I'm not talking about the people. I'm praying for them. All of us should be covering our Israeli brothers and sisters in the state of Israel. Let's pray for the protection of our Israeli brothers and sisters who are living inside of, the, of a demonic state, a rock child state of Israel. But we also have to pray for the everyday Palestinian people who are not a part of Hamas and Hezbollah and the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and the Mujahideen and the Muslim Brotherhood. Both parties are leasing a land that's not theirs. And that is my end tonight. If President Trump was in the Oval Office, we would not have this mess in Ukraine and we would not have this mess in the state of Israel. This is happening because we have a weak, fraudulent president who cannot remember his right hand from his left toe, okay? But I blame black folk for putting him into power because you believe the lie, oh, Trump is a racist. And I told you almost four years ago, remember this, Pastor Sam? Whatever happens to you in the next four years, you deserve it. Okay, don't cry to me. Oh, Bishop, I'm back on welfare. I lost my job. Okay, with the transatlantic pipeline because, oh, okay, Biden shut it down. I don't want to hear it. And these witches from the squad have got to be stopped. Little Sandy Cortez, <laughs> AOC, a former bartender. Stupid. Do you remember that last summer and summer before last? She was supposedly arrested outside of the Supreme Court and handcuffs, but she was putting up her arms. And when she knew the camera had spotted her, she put her on. It's a scam. The squad are nothing but witches. You see, we are true apostles. A true apostle has no fear. If you have fear, you don't belong here at Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group. I have to ex expose the scam, Pastor Sam. Are you supposed to be in handcuffs, but you waving? Stupid. And President Trump will be reelected. Oh, Lord have mercy. Was your minds blown tonight? I said, was your minds blown? Put up those faces if your minds were blown tonight. 13,080 atom and hydrogen bombs which could destroy all 8 billion people in one day. We have to pray. 
for what's going on in the Middle East because these devils on both sides, they war. There will never be peace in the, in the Middle East. And you know why? Because you got two tenants who have no legitimate claim in the land of promise. Israelis, I love them, but they have no legitimate claim according to the Kazarian hypothesis by an Israeli scholar, a scholar, a ge geneticist, <laughs> Dr. Ilhan Iyak. Did he did it? Iran Iyak. Did he not say that? Iran Ilhak. An Israeli said that today's Jews had no legitimate claim to the promised land. But why are they there? And the Palestinians had no legitimate claim to the promised land who put them there. So you got two tenants destroying each other because it is God is not in it. And when God is not in a nation, when it's not with a continent, there's chaos. We're all God's children, but the original Hebrews is black America in the black diaspora. See, that people are so uncomfortable. They don't want me teaching this, but my assignment is to teach this. Put up those faces if your minds were blown tonight. And especially what Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that Adolf Hitler did not create the Holocaust in the beginning. An Israeli prime minister said it was Mufti Hajj Amin El Husseini who green-lighted the Third Reich to take out six million precious Jewish people. You see, you've been lied to. Thank you, everyone. We need your help tonight. And to all of the patriots, President Trump is coming back. He never left. In this debacle that we have with the Biden administration, our midnight darkness is almost over. Did you hear what's that? What's that Indian guy's name? That young Indian guy who's running for president? He's not going to be. He'll be in in, in uh, Trump's administration. What's his name? Pastor Sam or Pastor Colleen? Yeah, smart guy. I think he's Harvard educated. He's running to be president on the Republican side. Swami, whatever his name is, his car was ran ran into by Ukraine Amer American Ukrainians because. What's his name? Uh, Dr. Washami? Uh, that's what his, not, not Dr. Shiva, not him. But this um, this Indian brother, smart brother, Harvard educated, he's running to be president on the Republican side. He won't make it, but he'll... Wasam, Washami? Thank you, Pastor Rick. Because he said that we have to cut money, we have to cut the money going to Ukraine. So they didn't like that. Rasa Swami, that's his name? Smart brother, true patriot. He's not ready to be president, but it's my prayer he becomes a part of the Trump administration. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and let's pray that we get a Speaker of the House. I don't know if they chose one or not. Listen, Matt Gates. listen, uh, you guys got to straighten this up, Matt Gates. I know he, he's a great patriot I'm from Florida. And uh, Kevin McCarthy, great patriot from California. But see, we don't need division in the Republican Party. All right, everyone, please, all the moderators, please put up the PayPal link. Was your minds blown? Did you learn anything tonight? Put a thumbs up if you learned something that you did not know before. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Meter. And please don't leave us live, listeners. I got a major prophecy for all of you here tonight in Christ's holy name, for thus saith the Lord. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group.
paypal.me. Uh, it's double uh, double cross, uh, Pastor Sam. So all of the moderators put this up just like how Bishop is putting this up. Okay. Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Okay. Uh, right beside Pastor Colleen's name, right beside Pastor True Witness' name, right beside Pastor Sam's name. Uh, praise God. Uh, right under Global Spiritual Revolution, uh, meet a group with black letters with a yellow or gold background. Don't leave us live, listeners. It's a powerful word for all of you. Take this, please, or your finger, whether you have a desktop, laptop, Apple tablet, Chrome tablet, uh, Android or iPhone or Apple Watch, click on the PayPal link. You don't need a PayPal account, ladies and gentlemen, my beautiful patriot brothers and sisters. Uh, click on the PayPal link, and after you click on the PayPal link, click send. I want you to plant two financial gifts. Number one, plant the Lord's tithe. According to the book of the prophet Malachi, Shall a man or a woman rob God? How have you robbed me in tithes and offerings? That's what the word of the Lord says, not what Bishop is saying. If your income is $3,000 each week, the Lord's tithe is $300. If your income is $5,000, the Lord's tithe is $500. If your income is $2,000, the gross is $2,000, the Lord's tithe is $200. Plant the Lord's tithe on paypal.me forward slash GSRR Medical. In the same transaction, plant, okay, $150 or more. Do that right now. Our ministry is ever so expanding all over the world. We got satellite classes, small, tiny classes. Uh, I think our biggest one is in Seoul. Of, uh, we have a, a family of 25. That's our biggest one. We like to keep them small. We got over 200, close to 300 million online registered students on our website, which is www.globalspiritualmovement.com. Also, I'm sorry, globalspiritualmovement.org. Also, please go to our cash app. You can also go to our cash app, which is dollar sign Global Revolution One. Dollar sign, then Global Revolution is all in upper cap capitalized letters. Then the number one, plant the Lord's tithe, the gross of the Lord's tithe, not after what Uncle Sam takes out, because the tithe doesn't belong to Uncle Sam, the government, it belongs to Christ. But in the same transaction, plant $150 or more. You should be like popcorn, like Pastor Queen Sugar says, $150, $150, uh, $300, $400, $500, $600, do that right now. I thank God for Pastor Chris Harris, one of my apostolic sons here in the Long Beach, California area. Your faithful giving. I thank God for Pastor Colleen. I thank God for Pastor Sam, Pastor Jody Bird, all you guys giving faithfully. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, God will give you double for your trouble, triple for your pain. Also, don't leave us live listeners, please, as a prophetic word from heaven for you. Also, you can send your checks or your money orders to uh, Larry Gators at P.O. Box 161, Lomina, California, 90717. Larry Gators at P.O. Box uh, 161, Lomina, California, 90717. And on your check or money order, just put in care of Larry Gators. Now, when you're getting your money orders, please get your money orders from the post office, not from Walmart, not from Torrance or us. I'm serious. Just get the money orders, not from Western Union, but from uh, your local post office, okay? The rest of you go to PayPal right beside Pastor Sam's name. Click on the PayPal link. Take this on your finger. After you click on the PayPal link, click send. Don't click request. Click send. Click send, click send, okay? And then plant the Lord's tithe and plant $150 or more, okay? Also, you can go to Cash App, Globe, dollar sign Global Revolution 1, dollar sign Global Revolution 1, okay? Woo! I'm telling you, God has a powerful word.
for every one of you here tonight. And I felt the leading of the Lord. God spoke to me and said, I want you to give a powerful uh, prophetical word to my students. You're, you're not my students. You don't belong to me. You belong to Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus to Christ. God said, but thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Biden administration regime will be destroyed. The Clinton machine will be destroyed. The Obama machine will be destroyed. The Democratic Party will be destroyed. And the Republican Party will be purified, for thus saith the Lord. Keep President Donald J. Trump under your apostolic prayers. He's been attacked from all sides, from witches from the Democratic Party and hidden warlocks from the Republican Party. Pray for your president, President Donald J. Trump, whom I have ordained and sanctioned for such a time as this. We will bring back the first constitution of 1776. We will bring back the United States of exceptionalism. We will hold on to the first constitution of 1776. We will hold on to the Declaration of Independence and we will hold on to the Bill of Rights for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Someone is being healed from cancer. God is removing your body out of the cancer tonight in Yeshua's holy name. God is removing your body out of the high blood pressure in Yeshua's holy name. God is removing the sugar diabetes, the high blood pressure, the cancer, the leukemia, the sickle cell. God is removing your body out of these sicknesses and out of these diseases in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God is saying, for thus saith the Lord to every patriot in the United States, your suffering is over with. To every patriot in the United States and throughout the world, your suffering is over with. CNN will be destroyed. MSNBC will be destroyed. NBC will be destroyed. CNBC will be destroyed. A portion of Fox will be destroyed. The BBC, the CBC will be destroyed. The United Press International and the Associated Press will be destroyed because it's ran by the system of demons, the Rothschilds. Patriots, don't be afraid. God is saying he's going to turn the nation upside down. And every pedophile will be exposed from both parties. Every raper will be exposed from both parties. And God is saying, well, thus saith the Lord, I have already marked hunter for death. But thus saith the Lord. Thank you, everyone, for being with the bishop tonight. We call those things which be not as though they were. We need your financial help. Counseling, send us a text. Thank you, Pastor Colleen, 917 Seven three six five nine four six nine one seven seven three six five nine four six. Pastor Jody Bird is counseling now. I'm going to be calling on Pastor Sam to do so. The bishop has a heavy schedule for the next two weeks. Uh, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, I will counsel you. Uh, it's a hundred dollars for the first hour, and and then fifty dollars every hour after that. People say, "Why do we have to pay, Bishop?" Well, you're paying thousands of dollars. Okay, to a clinical psychologist. Okay, this is apostolic order. PayPal.me forward slash GSR Media Group. Okay, Texas, your name and where you're from, 
at 917-736-5946. 917-736-5946. And we will set up a counseling session with you. It's $100 for the first hour, 50 thereafter. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Thank you for joining one of the most powerful lectures I have ever given in 44 years of global apostolic ministry. Volume one of the immaculate deception of the Middle East. And it's coming to an end. And I thank you. The NFL is coming down. The NBA is coming down. NHL is coming down. Major League Baseball is coming down. You were warned during the two-year layoff, but you didn't listen. And Stephen A. Smith, you will be fired. Not because you've done anything wrong. Stephen A. Smith, you're being set up to be let go. That's why they brought in Shannon Sharp, who turned down millions of dollars from Barstool. You can see it. Shannon Sharp turned down millions of dollars from Barstool just to be on first take two days a week because he's going to take over. That's why Stephen A. Smith created a podcast because he knows his days are numbered. And when they let go Stephen A. Smith, he will probably say, well, it's time for me to go. Remember the prophecy from the mind of God through the bishop. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. And I thank you. God bless you. Good night from Los Angeles. Ooh, I, I feel my strength tonight. Patriots, don't be discouraged. Keep exposing the pedophiles. Keep exposing the secret societies around the world. Because the day of our deliverance is at hand in Christ's holy name. God bless you. The bishop loves you. Share this teaching throughout social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Don't edit it. If you edit it, you'll be blocked. I can't wait for Pastor Sipta to share it on Instagram. She's got the most powerful videos on Instagram, okay? Love you, Pastor Sipta, my daughter. God bless you guys. The immaculate deception of the Middle East is over, and I thank you. I'll see you guys soon this Thursday. In Christ's holy name. Good night. I'm in love with you. Don't think it's strange when I say I'm in love with you. It means I love you as Christ loves you. If you guys get a chance, uh, check out the bishop's um, interview with my beautiful brother, Brother Sasha Stone. Uh, I was on his powerful show um, about two weeks ago, I think. Two, three weeks ago. On Lancers. The Lazarus Initiative, powerful, powerful show. And he wants me to come back, and I'm going to do that. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I'll see you on Thursday. God bless you. I love you in Christ's holy name.